only that information that we're given and other stuff that we know. Okay, so the first one that we've got there, the integral from 0 to 5 of f of x plus g of x, if you look back at your properties, if you're adding two functions together, guess what? You can add the values of their integrals together as long as they have the same limits, and they do. So here, that's just 5 plus 12, so this answer is 17. Literally, it's as easy as that. Okay, now... The next one adds a little bit to that. We've got some scalar multiples, but we also have a scalar multiple rule when we're multiplying by a constant. So 2f of x minus 1 third g of x, again, literally all we got to do is multiply the value of the integral for f of x, multiply the value for the integral of g of x, make sure we don't get those mixed up. So we've got 10 minus 4, so the value of that integral is 6. Now I could go through a big long explanation of why all this is true and whatnot, but it just has to do with the fact that you can combine these functions in these ways um, and their properties transfer. Now we have one, uh, we have a property for this third one, the integral from 5 to 0 of g of x with respect to x. What happens when we flip the limits? It just changes the signs. Okay, now in this case it's positive, so it becomes negative. If it were a negative, um, if it were a negative value, then it would become positive. Now, um, before now, the only time we dealt with negative uh, values for the antiderivative or for the integral here is if it's been below the curve. But what's going on here is instead of moving from left to right, going from 0 to 5, now we're going from right to left, we're going from 5 to 0. So that's a little note to make in the back of your head. When you move right to left, your area is accumulating in the opposite amount. So when we're going from 0 to 5, we accumulate 12, but when we go from 5 to 0, we're still accumulating 12, but it's negative area because we're going right to left. Okay? Now, this last one is going to require a little bit more work on our part. Okay? The first part is easy. The integral from 0 to 5 of f of x is 5, but we can't just subtract, I mean, what is x? Okay? x is still the function x. So, we look at this as 5 minus the integral from 0 to 5 of, mm, that's a negative Oh, wait, no, sorry. I've already got the minus. x dx. We're going to have to compute that part, okay? We weren't given that part. We're going to have to figure that out. Um, bless you. So, what is the antiderivative of x? x squared over, x squared over 2. We're evaluating that from 0 to 5. Since that's a minus, we need some parentheses here. So we've got 5 squared over 2 minus 0. Okay, 0 squared over 2 is 0. So we've got 5 minus uh, 25 over 2. 5 is 10 over 2. So the value of this is negative 15 over 2. Okay, so you can combine something that they just outright give you the value of and a function that you're going to have to compute. Remember, we had to do that every once in a while um, with those derivatives. Um, they would give us the table with the f of x and the f prime of x, and then they would ask us h of x is um, x squared plus f of x. What's the derivative of h? You had to take the derivative of h. Uh, of x squared um, and plug in the value of the x that they were asking you for. So same kind of deal here. Okay. And let's look at one more here. The integral from 0 to 5 of g of x times f of x. Any thoughts? Did we write down a property for this yesterday? reason, what do we not have a rule for with integrals? 
product. Okay? We do not have a product pool for this right here. So um, we don't have enough information. This cannot be answered. We would have to know more about g of x and f of x before we would be able to answer this question. Okay, you cannot just multiply the values of their uh, definite integrals. What do you have to know? What they are. You would have to know what they are. Huh? Yeah, the actual functions. You would have to know the actual functions because when we've been asked to integrate something like this before, we've had to simplify it before we can integrate. Okay? The antiderivative, the value of the definite integral of, let me just come up with an example here, x squared times x cubed, I promise you, is not equivalent to the integral. Um, I mean, it is equal, it is equal to the integral of x to the fifth. But if we knew that this was, let's just, I'm just making up numbers here. I know we can actually compute it. But let's say that's 4 and that's 6. They told us that. Okay. It is not equal to 24. Okay. not going to be the same. So you don't have enough information to answer that one. Okay, let's look at some of the other properties. Um, this is a little bit more common of a type of problem. Um, they will uh, kind of split up the intervals and ask us to come up with some stuff. So if they tell us that the integral from 0 to 1 of our function is equal to 1, the integral from 0 to 2 is 4, and the integral from 1 to 4 is 7. So notice not all of our limits are the same. We're going to end up combining these using that property about a to b, b to c is the same as a to c. That's what we're going to be using here. So that very first one, okay, that very first one. The integral from 0 to 4 of f of x dx. Well, they didn't give that to us. And not one of our integrals there explicitly says that it's going from 0 to 4. But our first one goes from 0 to 1, and then our last one picks up at 1 and goes to 4. So we can use that property there to say that this is equal to the integral from 0 to 1. I'm just writing it out explicitly so you, when you look back you know where it came from. Because together, going from 0 to 1 and then 1 to 4, we end up going from 0 to 4. So that was equal to 1. The other one was equal to 7. So the area under the curve from 0 to 4 is 8. What do you mean skip the middle? Yeah, the, the middle one isn't really involved here. Okay, now let's look at the next one. The integral from 1 to 2. Okay, the integral from 1 to 2 of this function. Now, it may help to kind of draw a visual of what we know. Okay, based on those limits, I'm going to be looking at the first two, right? I'm not going to be using the last one because the last one goes all the way to 4. Um, so the middle one is the only integral involving 2. So I'm just going to kind of sketch out what we're looking at here. Whatever our function is, okay, I'm going to 
say this is 2 and this is 4 over here. Okay, so from 0 to 2, we know that the area under this curve is equal to 4. Based on the first one, we know that the area under the curve from 0 to 1, I didn't draw this very much to scale, but we know that that is equal to 1. The question is, what's the area from 1 to 2? So it's still using that property that the integral from a to b plus the integral from b to c is equal to a to c. It's just moving a piece of it to the other side or subtracting that other piece. All right. Uh, how about this third one? The integral from 4 to 1. Negative 7. Okay, that one's easy. We're just flipping the limits on one of them. So that's negative 7. Hmm. From 1 to 2 plus 2 to 4 is equal to 1 to 4. So we know 1 to 2, whoa. We know 1 to 2 is 3. We're trying to find 2 to 4. 1 to 4 is 7. So we subtract 3. And that's how we get 4. sure which way makes more sense. Okay, I know some of you can just see it. Some of you may need to see the picture like we did this one, or this may be helpful to use the symbolic. Okay, A, B, B, C, B, C. Okay, that's a very common, very common one right there. Okay, so let's practice with